Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're gonna talk about top five equipments. Now be mindful, this equipments are not uh, talking about like as in like the latest or the greatest. I'm talking about equipments that change something fundamentally or like had some unique or profound impact on the whole industry. So let's dive right into it. Now first we are talking about road wireless go now this equipment changed the game basically how low budget wireless equipment works because you have to understand it. audio industry is very stagnant because most people ignore it and the people who care about it they are doing that from like 1980s and the consequence of that is there are professional grade microphones there are mixers that are professional grade there are professional wireless solutions but those make your car look like a cheap thing uh, cheap equipment so fundamentally speaking uh the audio industry was like overpriced as hell it's like why the heck this zoom uh, h1n costs so much it's like it's almost the same price as a low-end uh, smartphone which has 10 times the technology it's just like lol what else you gonna do so that attitude was like creating a very stagnant reality so this road changed that fundamentally they said hey what if we had a wireless system everybody's like dude that's common no but rather than utilizing old radio technology we utilize 2.5 gigahertz wireless technology which has been fine-tuned to nth degree by utilizing in every single electronic equipment so what if we use that it's smaller lighter less power consumption much better range much like every problem with this technology has been already solved so what if we use that awesome small compact light and in terms of design wise like somebody put some thought into this it's like what, what if we have the clip behind it what if that clip was width wise size exactly as the hot shoe mount so imagine if you have to mount this on top of a camera you just slide it into the hot shoe mount it's so like somebody thought of it like this whole equipment it's not the latest not the greatest not like awesome but it's just like what if we thought like before we making our equipment it's like what if we spend five minutes or ten minutes thinking about the equipment that we are making so it was mind-bogglingly awesome like it changed the landscape so to say like after not even one whole year the moment this came out like every company rushed trying to make something similar which is really good that's what i'm saying like that's what we call like an industry leading kind of scenario it's like they started this now there are other companies that are making like holland is also making something unique so i like that idea so that's the whole thing that road wireless go created a chain reaction which i like and they are changing this whole stagnant world where they are like uh, we're gonna sell you 1980s equipment and uh, we're gonna you know charge you like a, a mid-range chattering phone because what else you gonna do so fundamentally i like the idea that they are not like you know let's f the customer it's like what if we give you equipment that is like at least somebody put some thought into this now is it the latest and greatest hell no that's why i'm specifying like this changed the world now we are getting latest and greatest so this was one of my first equipment that i am like very very happy about that this came into work because many uh, creators have been empowered by this kind of equipment then we come to zoom f2 another audio equipment now this audio equipment is also shaking up the world quote unquote and it's creating a new technology in stagnant world because audio technology is really really stagnant even though we had 32 bit audio recording software for very long time we didn't have anything that actually utilized it like other than some midi devices and all that other jazz which like somebody came up with the idea what if we have two amplifiers which is a common technology right now like many even old equipments have that two amplifier technology but they record onto two different tracks and those tracks are 24 bits somebody came up with the idea hey 32 bit we already have the file pipeline that's not an issue we have the memory cards that are big enough that's like dude i don't even give a damn about this so, and we have the read and write speed so everything that we need to make 32 bit a thing we already have that and we also have two uh, amplifier circuit already many equipments already have that like pro end equipments they have one signal that is for hot another for cold so basically cold is for low volume very basically when you are whispering the audio will go through the cold side and it will have proper data uh, the large side if you look at the data it won't have any register it will it needs much higher oomph to trigger it so if you start sh shouting it will be uh, captured by the high end now this is a common thing this is how many of the movies that you see many of the audio mixing has been done it's a known thing it works everything is awesome now somebody came up with the idea it's like what if we combine two independent file tracks that are 24 bit each into one 32 bit so that's the amazing part of this 32 bit float recording basically forget about audio recording levels there is no level it's like microphone has this kind of level like how uh, much range how much dynamic range it can handle your physic uh, basically your amplifier circuit can only record this much so what if you add two of them now you are in a scenario where your microphone will physically clip before the electronic parts does what does that mean that means every microphone has what we call absolute sound pressure basically if you reach sound level of that category it will uh, simply not vibrate either it will get damaged or will stop vibrating that happens whenever you are talking about weapons uh, basically weapons kind of training requires a dedicated microphone those microphones have much higher absolute clipping frequency 
again they have to dealing with high velocity gases so they have to have a bit more rigidity into them so in those sort of scenario you can understand that like there are microphones fine-tuned for certain jobs but most scenarios you don't need to tamper with uh, basically microphone level simply because it's more than good enough it's just our digital part was ugly part so this 32 bit solves that and zoom f2 is first device that is so cheap that is available for consumer electronics i'm not talking about like pro end where i don't have to think about money because like you know it's like 0.001 percent of my whole budget that's the amazing part of it like this is changing the world it's like it's something that you can start with any indie movie shoots any uh, heck even youtubers can utilize this so it's really amazing for like not too much of money however this product wise is not that great same with like you know road was road was first this had something similar because this almost got a sidetracked by a tentacle sink now be mindful tentacle sink equipment is better and a bit more expensive but problem is tentacle does not have the reach the company does not have the reach like i can't just order them in india so there is a still a value to having a zoom have that and zoom had the world's first 32 bit audio recorder so that's why i'm talking about zoom f2 now let's talk about canon eos rp now canon eos rp is something really unique simply because it's one of the greatest starter camera basically at this point in time now we make APS-C sensors simply because uh, silicon industry was lagging behind but at this point in time silicon is cheap silicon sensors are cheap you that's why your uh, gs5 will cost almost like panasonic Mi micro four third will cost almost same as like a7s3 simply because silicon sensor is the cheap part right now the most expensive part in your camera is the processor so what Canon was like, what if we give you the uh, low end processor but with a large sensor? Now you may be like, what's the benefit in that? Well, think of it this way if you have APS-C, you are dealing with the dynamic range of APS-C, you are dealing with the lens selection of any APS-C. A full frame is much better ecosystem simply because it has been going on for 150 years. So, fundamentally, every company, be it Nikon, be it Sony, be it Canon, they make their best lens in full frame. You want to upgrade to full frame always. This is the same thing, and that's why Micro Four Third was not doing so well. And uh, there were two ma major manufacturers manufacturer of micro four third one of which was uh, olympus which has already went bankrupt panasonic which will soon go bankrupt and they have already started to go into full frame because sooner or later you will always end up with full frame so this company basically canon they are like what if we give you a very low barrier to entry canon eos rp now is this the latest and greatest camera no but it allows you to like bypass so many low end dslrs like uh, uh, 90d 80d those sort of equipment you can just bypass then buy this this is a current gen technology with the uhs two card slot is it latest and greatest no is the battery life latest and greatest no but it's more than adequate and you can enjoy it you can start shooting with it. and once you invest in lenses you won't be trapped by the system like that happens with many people who like uh, invest in sony aps-c nikon aps-c or canon aps-c it's like the moment they are like hey uh, i want to upgrade to this upper body it's like yeah upper bodies are generally always uh, you know uh, paired up with full frame sensors it's like what if you don't have to like you know buy very low end equipment so this is really good now it also supports two lens mount you can utilize rf natively and ef with an adapter so that makes it much more amazing than basically m mounts option because while you can say the same thing about m mount m mount does not have enough lenses compared to speaking either ef or rf and rf are getting red link, uh, red ring lenses so you can understand like canon is focusing on rf system and this low barrier to entry is quite amazing like is is camera could have been improved a little bit like I will buy this camera right now if it did not have 30 minute recording limit because again European Union had removed that raw, uh, law when this camera was released so they could have done that it was a software thing but they are like no we want to sell you C-series I'm like no keep your C-series I'm gonna buy a Sony simply because I need no recording limit so get the point like for many people this camera is a really good starting point a full frame high-end equipment that if you are talk to anybody is like few years ago it's like we're gonna have a full frame from Canon or Nikon or Sony of this caliber on this price people will laugh you out of the room but we have this it's really amazing what we can able to do nowadays it's like it's much better than buying second hand so depending on the equipment some equipments are really good other equipments you may find is like oh there is a reason why it was a second hand so really really good camera like in terms of price and this actually shows that if companies really want to retire their APS-C lineup which Canon is trying to do because so far they have not released a single APS-C lens for RF mount nor a APS-C camera uh, again they have one in c-series but they released it right off the gap with a speed booster so i don't think they are planning to make a aps -E, and it, it should not make any uh, different if they did so really really good equipment
then we come to the equipment that like wow the whole world sony a7 s3 now we, i do know the fact that uh, while you're watching this video there is a very good chance the new hype would be sony uh, a1 but i'm pretty sure they wanted to call it 10 and somebody's like dude it's 10 just remove the zero it's a1 now so uh, a7 s3 price wise is much more comfortable than the a1 and this camera whole equipment of this camera it says one thing what happens when company listens to the customer not to some boardroom meeting like you no know, no japanese ego or hoo ha like no customer what the heck customer wants customer want flip out screen let's give them flip out screen customer want easy card uh, compatibility what if we give them two cards enjoy like hey you can only afford you just two cards enjoy that put both of them you're gonna get every single functionality other than one extreme functionality but you're gonna get it enjoy and if you really need to push your uh, camera performance bu buffer modes and all that jazz utilize uh uhs uh, card one slot uss i'm saying basically cf uh gen one system a type card slot uh, you had issues with uh, your menu system okay we're gonna redesign the menu system you had issues with micro uh, hdmi output here's the deal what if we give you a full size hdmi output now you had an issue with the fact that our older cameras only had 8 bit output okay no problem i understand that but here's the deal there's a 16 bit limit like that's the general uh, adc that is used in every digital camera the analog to digital convert that's 16 bit and they're like what if we give you that whole 16 bit do whatever you want to do man like if you want to uh, temper it down and record in 10 bit do that if you want to temper in 12 bit do that i want to record 16 bit raw go yolo so this camera there's only one thing about this like just listen to the goddamn customer and you can uh, see the impact of it it's like first it literally kicked our r5 our r5's 8k became redundant after this camera it's like hey camera overheats what if we put a heat sink inside so it can dissipate the heat so at this point in time this camera will only overheat in super extreme scenarios it's rare for you to get it overheating what if we don't have recording limit which there was an actual reason european union being a stupid uh, idiot there was a reason for that 30 minute recording limit. but once european union fixed that law of like three years ago it's like why the heck modern cameras have this so they're like no we're gonna give you unlimited recording go enjoy it's like what if uh, you have problem with battery running out in that kind of unlimited recording what if we give you USB-C with power delivery it's like everything about this camera is very simple it's just like what if we listen to the goddamn customer who's paying us the money so i'm really happy what a7s3 did i do understand why a1 does not have flip out screen because that would have been like dude why would anybody buy that like you know uh, but i get that but that's a lame decision but that's why this camera is so amazing it's like we just listen to the goddamn customer it's like no extra hoo ha it's just like what do you want you want this take it and go so i'm really happy with this camera now again it's very unlikely that i will be able to, able to afford this anytime soon but it's on my list now we come to another uh, company that is uh, making waves slowly uh, mavo edge 8k now you have to understand re was the you know gold standard red started to come out and they uh, they were the quote unquote underdog they worked their ass off and they slowly started to make a name for themselves and they became basically the same thing that they were complaining about they became the basically cheaper re so to say so Mavo is trying to become the uh, you know next name in the industry however because they do not have the clout of red or uh, ecosystem of sony nikon uh, sony and canon C systems they have to do something unique and they are doing something quite amazing they are like what if we made customer life easy new idea it's like it's mind-boggling what if customer does not have to struggle with our equipment what if we did not f the customer i'm like wow that's mind-boggling like think of it this way uh, there is somewhere in a red company there is an engineer who's like whose sole job is is to make a SATA interface awesome or uh, standard technology really good and then make a proprietary plug to, for that m.2 SATA thing why why and and here's the interesting part not give two of that it's like why you do know every electronic equipment fails there's a primary reason why everything has returned backup there is no uh, like you know going around it there is a reason why even servers have whole backup like go to amazon server the latest and greatest equipment technology hard drives which has like mean time between failures in millions of hours they still have backup hard drives primary reason is just that one is not enough and they know that red knows that that it's a bad equipment and it's a bad design and they have suffered failures and that's why in their own website they said data recovery here you should not need data recovery that's why every camera heck every stills camera that is made for professional have dual card slots and red is like uh no what if we f you so and not to mention they are utilizing this old uh, you know x fat system where it still has that uh, x fat system not x fat they're just using fat system and they have 4gb file size limit it's like and look at marvel on the other end marvel is like 
we get it we are giving you 8k we are giving you uh, raw formats that will consume a lot of bandwidth so sata 3 while good enough but it's almost clipping like almost uh, sata 3 that is 600 mps that's not almost you are reaching up uh, you know final limit what if we go to next best thing that is nvme now this puppy uses two nvme ssds now interesting part about nvme ssds they are mass produced so per unit cost like per gigabyte cost is super cheap compared to every other card system compared to even ss uh, sd so if you are talking about like a two terabyte or four terabyte this you can afford everything else don't even think about it don't even think about like what's the price of a two terabyte sd card or like a, you know a c fast card c fast express card good luck with that so they're like what you don't have to do that and they have two of it amazing what does that mean that simply means there is a person's job in a basically movie setup it's like okay take the digital file make a backup right now that person's sole job is like to make sure the file is backed up uh, cataloged properly everything all that because of this, he can literally pull two of them out, put of them in two different computers. And because these are SATA uh, system, basically it's SATA, I'm saying, NVMe system, it's only limited by 10 GBPS of USB 3. And if you have some unique interface, let's say a Thunderbolt interface, you can dump the file at 4 GBPS. That's awesome. And another aspect, video formats are a big hassle unless you are Blackmagic because Blackmagic makes their own equipment and their own software editing package. They can say, hey, dude, we have custom format. I do understand that. I know it's a bit of a pain point, but we have a software that can handle that. So we can understand. This company does not have that. And they are like, hey, what if we give you a common format? What if we give you Apple ProRes RAW? Wow. Like, what if you are not Linus Tech Tips where you can just like uh, take a via any camera and then have a giant server taking your, uh, you know, footage, footage and then just like, you know, ingest, ingesting it and like, you know, changing the format, what we call transcoding. What if you can't afford the time or the resources that it takes to transcode? This is like, don't even think about it. Don't worry about it. Like, just take the card out and directly edit. Heck, these things are fast enough. You can do direct editing on them itself. Like, this is what is running your high end laptop. So awesome like that's the whole point like even in battery department it's like hey you uh, you are talking about big budget system you're gonna have v plates awesome you're talking about nd level you're generally gonna have b bp batteries awesome direct support hey you are talking about uh, you know streaming a concert let's say e games where you have a lot of digital infrastructure already put in place use ethernet pro it's like awesome it's like the whole camera screens somebody thought it's like what if we made customer life easier what if we rather than f the customer is like hey you're giving us money we're gonna give you a good equipment that will make your life easy and i understand that it's like this company does not have the luxury of like you know oh we are ready you're gonna buy us no matter how miserable we make you they're like no no no. we'll make your life easier hey uh, the basically instead of buying a super duper expensive uh, you know monitor use your iphone man it's it was already much better than everything else just use that and you're like hey it's not bright enough just put a goddamn shade on top of it it's much cheaper so that's the whole point that that's why this made equipment made me really happy about the future it's like no companies are coming up that are like let's not f the customer let's just give them something they're paying for us so this equipment really made me happy about this so this was the top five equipments that made me very happy i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching